I'm on my way to a brand new kick. Welcome back to eSim Studios. My name is Taylor Bell. Now, I've been getting uh, some pushback, uh, some warranted, uh, some not, on my take of the new Pixel 9 series CPU. If you are unaware, the benchmarks got leaked of the new Pixel 9 series CPU, the Tensor G4 chip that's powering this new Pixel lineup, um, is very underwhelming to say the least. Now, I've got to choose my words kindly. Uh, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. However, I do want to give you my honest opinion. I did build this channel on honesty, and well, let me give you my honest opinion. Um, quite frankly, these CPU scores, these benchmark scores, absolutely suck. Um, now, I've been, as I mentioned, getting pushed back. Everybody and their mom keeps telling me, benchmarks don't mean everything. Benchmarks don't mean everything. I get that. Uh, I like to compare this to uh, buying a new car, right? When you buy a new sports car, you see the zero to 60, you see the quarter mile, right? You go into a store, you buy, you're looking to buy a new Corvette. Oh, they are quick to show you how fast it is, uh, how quick it is. Um, now buying a phone similar, right? Now, obviously uh, when you buy a new car, you're not a new Corvette. You're not going to be flooring the gas, going down the street to the local HEB, right? You're not going to be going zero to 60. They say, oh, it goes zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds. It is a quarter mile in just over 10 seconds. That's cool. Right? It's fast as hell, right? You're not going to drive that fast everywhere, but it's there if you need it, right? So take that same idea to phones, right? So... If you have a super fast phone that scores phenomenal benchmark scores, you're not needing it for, you know, you're not gaming 24-7, but it's there if you need it. Well, the Pixel is basically priced like a Corvette, but giving you Honda Civic performance. Uh, that's just what it is. Benchmark scores are were leaked, and we will review them here in a second. Um, but I want to get into a little of my reasoning, right? So these pixels are overpriced. These pixels are overpriced. You're buying a Corvette with Honda Civic insides. Um, for example... The OnePlus 12, a phenomenal device. Maybe the very best Android phone you can buy. Cameras, we'll get to that in a minute. But you get top-notch specs with, it's basically flip-flopped. With the OnePlus 12, you're buying a Honda Civic with Corvette performance. This, with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs, actually has more than that. It has 24 gigs of RAM with expandable uh, storage, uh, RAM expansion. You get the point. UFS storage, uh, what is it, 4 or 4.1. Just a badass phone. And it's only $700. Now, Pixel 9 Pro or Pixel 9 Pro XL, is 12 comparable the storage variant comparable to this is i think 1259 so after taxes essentially almost 1300 dollars and you're buying a honda civic um i just don't see the point now if you want the pixel and you're happy with pixel by all means and you can afford it by all means please get it i'm not discouraging i'm not saying no i'm not telling you not to buy it i'm not saying nobody go buy this it's trash i'm not saying that i'm just saying for me there's way better options out there uh they did do a complete redesign on the uh, looks and feel right it's got a new flat screen it's got flat edges flat sides Looks very, very visually appealing. Um, but 
they're ch overcharging you for this device. Um, it's it only has UFS storage 3.1, 3.1. That's been out for three years. Um, benchmark scores. So this blows it away, right? These scores blow it away. For comparison, did you know the Pixel 9, the brand new Pixel 9, scored worse, scored lower in benchmark testing than the Pixel 8 from last year? I When I saw this, I had to do a double take. I, when I compared the scores, I did a double take. The Pixel 8, you guys, you can rub my eyes. Uh, I've been trying to examining this and looking at it from every which way for about 12 hours. The Pixel 8 scored better in benchmark scores than the Pixel 9. Now, why is that? Well, for one thing, the brand new CPU is just not that... I don't want to say it's not good. It's just... It's nowhere where it should be if you're paying $1,200 for a phone. I'll put it that way. The Nothing Phone 2. The Nothing Phone 2 scored better than the Pixel 8 Pro from last year's flagship Pixel. And this year, the scores from the Pixel 9 Pro XL are just literally... We just compared the, the uh, scores on my live stream. The brand new Pixel 9 Pro XL is literally a few points higher than this phone. So this phone has a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. This CPU is almost three years old. And it's still right up there in performance with the brand new Pixel 9 Pro XL that essentially costs to over $1,200. So if you want to get the Pixel, get it, right? If it doesn't skip, if it doesn't stutter, if it doesn't freeze... Um, if you're not that big of a gamer, then it should be fine for you, right? And it won't. It won't freeze. It's a smooth experience using the Pixel devices, right? Um, the Pixel 8 Pro, very buttery smooth experience. Uh, and I'm sure this one will too. But I'm saying, for me personally, uh, I believe you're paying way too much for what they give you. And if you say, yeah, well, I get it. Um, I still think you're full of BS, but I'm getting one because nothing comes close to the picture quality of a Pixel. Pixel is the best camera phone. Um, this actually, and we'll test it when 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 uh, Google sends us the Pixel 8 Pro, uh, excuse me, the Pixel 9 Pro. I'm going to present to you this. This one plus 12, better picture quality than any Samsung phone I have. Better than the S24 Ultra. I'm wondering, I'm thinking this is right up there with the Pixel 9 Pro XL. Pro, Pro XL, whatever you want to say. The Samsungs, as you know, produce a very vivid, saturated um, image quality, right? This is more along the lines of, and Pixel is known for producing a very natural looking uh, uh, image quality, right? From what is same quality as you would see with your own with your own physical eyes. This produces a image quality that of a Pixel, right? It's not too saturated, but it produces a very lifelike image. Um, blown away by this camera, absolutely blown away. I'm betting that this is right up there with a pixel. And we'll, we'll, we will soon find out. Uh, if you're watching this, just stay tuned to our channel. And uh, we'll compare the two here in, shoot, I don't know, a week or so, whenever we get it. But um, I'm betting this is right up there. So, again, I just wanted to make this video and put this out there. I know benchmark is not everything. And again, I'm not saying it's a trash phone. I'm sure it's going to be a smooth operating system. Yes, you'll be able to do everything a Samsung phone will do. You'll be, a, you'll be able to do some AI stuff, right? Um, but it's it's just simply not worth it in my opinion, right? Uh, uh, I just... 
I was very disappointed today in seeing the scores. So let's go. Let's check these scores out. I got them in two different places. I got them on eSimStudios.app and I got them on TechLink.News. Where do y'all want to go? Let's go to. Let's go to TechLink.News. So TechLink and dot news. Here is my lovely website. S25 just leaked. Yes, we have that. iPhone 17 Air new design leaked. We got that info up there. iPhone SE 4 not gonna get Apple intelligence. Apple AI. Hmm, we got that up there for you. Pixel 9 only model that does not have a vapor chamber. Hmm. So, yes, I did title this. Tensor G, uh, G4 performance sucks. Now, here are the benchmark scores from the Pixel 8 on the left, Pixel 8 Pro on the right. And here are the benchmark scores of the Pixel 9. 1590 single core, 3821 multi core. Pixel 9 Pro XL, 1950 single core. 4655 multi core score. Um, on mini phones, have that beat. Mini last year's phones have that beat. Uh, in fact, dare I say, phones from two years ago have this beat. In fact, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 uh, has this beat. And my Nothing Phone 2, which essentially has a three year old CPU comes close doesn't beat beat uh, the pixel 9 pro xl in these scores but it's just a few points shy we went over and did the comparison on my live stream um but there are the scores there are these scores um again i'm not harping on the fact my main gripe is the price for what you're getting again it's overpriced. UFS storage 3.1 and scores that you would traditionally see from two to three years ago, right? <sighs> Anyways, um, we will have to wait and see what the Pixel 10 series looks like uh, benchmark-wise. As you know, next year's Pixel is using their own CPU this year. The Tensor, Tensor G2, G3, and G4 is essentially using a Exynos, Samsung Exynos CPU with the Google logo slapped on it. So I'm kind of giving them the uh, benefit of the doubt. It may sound like I'm pounding on them, but... Well, look, they put it out there. This is what they're presenting to the public, right? So I can't give them too much benefit of the doubt. Now, next year is where we really, really see what Google is going to put into this Pixel lineup. I think next year's a make or break year. If they have a, when they put out their new CPU, right, it's also going to be manufactured by TSMC and their world-renowned uh, uh, packing manufacturing process for these CPUs. We will see. I'm expecting a big performance jump next year, but I'm going to hold judgment. I'm going to reserve my uh, wishful thinking and wait, I'm going to have to wait a whole nother year to see where this line goes. Because if they only have a very minimal improvement on their G5 over this year's G4, it doesn't look good for Pixel. Now, if they come in next year with the Pixel 10 and the Tensor G5 and they just blow the charts off with a extremely powerful CPU, I'll say, there we go. Now we're back on track. And the sky's the limit. But they're at, they're at a crossroads. Make no doubt about it. They are on thin ice. They are at a crossroads. Because you cannot go multiple years with underwhelming performance and still charge premium flagship prices. It just doesn't add up. It's just not going to add up. So um, it is what it is. Again, if you want one and you're set on getting one, more power to you. Um, but if you're really being cautious and being smart as far as price per performance, this phone's not it. Price for performance, you're going to want to get this, right? OnePlus 12. Um, 
and the new OnePlus 13 comes out in four months. Or get the good old S24 Plus. You pick one of these up. This performs way, way better than the Pixel. And you can pick one up right now used for about 600 bucks. Or you can get a new one, which is $1,000. This is priced uh, normal. This is a normal $1,000 phone and it blows away. Minus, I get it, the picture quality. I get it. But uh, assuming everything else, you're getting way more performance per dollar with this. And then you can go with the big boy. The phone I do not leave without, uh, the S24 Ultra. Way, way more for your dollar. And it costs about the same as the Pixel 9 Pro XL. So uh, it is what it is. If you think I'm wrong, if you think I'm an idiot, let me know in the comments. Trust me, my feelings will not get hurt. I've been called an idiot once or twice before, so I'm used to it. But uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know, is this a concern for you? Are you getting the phone? Are you not getting the phone because of what you've seen today? Uh, let me know. I'm kind of testing the market, uh, testing to see the, how users feel about this. Uh, I've been on Reddit on uh, Twitter earlier, and people are blasting Google So uh, after seeing this. So I'm not necessarily blasting them. I'm just like, it's not worth what they're asking for. That's my kind of angle at this whole uh, benchmark leak. So... It is what it is. Let me know what you think. eSim Studios. Uh, subscribe to the channel because we are getting the... They're sending us the 9 Pro. So, um, we'll test them. Stay tuned to find out. We got real world testing about to happen. So, let me get out of here. Peace out. See you all tomorrow.